Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is all about large format uh, photography and uh, I'm going to be photographing this uh, 19, I think it's about 1928 Voigtlander Bergheil um, camera. Uh, I did a review so if you want to check out uh, in, uh, on my channel I did a review on this camera and also uh, there's a roll of Tri-X and I'm going to uh, call this video uh, Vintage Classics. This camera is a double extension so I want to photograph it with the bellows fully extended. And as you can see they go out a fairly long way for a small camera. So I'm going to uh, set, set, set up, show you how I do the uh, set up for the still life uh, and, and just to show that you don't need a, a lot of uh, gear to do this, uh, you've just got to improvise. Um, so first of all, just remove that. Uh, back uh, drop, I'm just going to use this uh, bit of black uh, linen, it's actually a blackout blind, uh, got it from an old roller blind. So I'm going to use that, And uh, but first of all I need to get some wood, I'm just going to bob it on the actual uh, piece of wood that I've placed uh, on the worktop and I've uh, wedged it with my uh, my heating unit to stop it tipping over. So I'm going to place this, this wood on top of it. Like that. And then get the cloth and just drape it down over the uh, Push it back slightly. So we've got a nice backdrop with no sharp edges in the corners at the bottom here. And then we get the camera and I want to do this at a slight angle. So I'm going to place the camera around about an angle like that. And then I'm going to place the film. Um, I'm going to have to look at this on the live format camera, but I'm going to place it somewhere to the side. So we've got like uh, two classics there, Kodak Tri-X and the Voigtlander Bergheil. Whoops. Right, we'll get the camera set up. I'll show you how I'm going to set it up and then uh, I'll show you the, the lighting uh, that I'm going to use for this. It's, I say it's quite a simple setup. So I'll get the camera set up. Right, first thing I'll uh, set up the camera. You'll probably have seen this camera before in uh, previous videos. It's a, a Chamonix or Chamonix uh, 4x5 uh, field camera. Now to set these up you've got to make sure that everything's what they call zeroed out. Uh, all, all neutralised so there's no movements on the back or the front uh, standards. For those that don't know, this is the front standard and this is the rear standard. So we've got little marks on the camera to show us that we're in line and everything's, as I say, zeroed out. Once I've got that set, uh, fix the lens on. I'm going to be using uh, my 150mm lens for this. And just fit that on the front standard. Now on the uh, front of the camera, there's a little uh, sliding sliding knob there. If we push it to the right hand side, as you're looking from the back, it opens the lens. So now I can see right through to the ground glass. And if I press it to the left, it closes it so no lights go into the back. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it open for now for focusing. And then just have a, another look at this setup. The idea is to get all the front of the camera in focus and using the plane of focus to pull that roll of Kodak Tri-X also into focus and then the background going out of focus. I don't want it all in focus. 
just the front part and then going out of focus. So the next uh, thing is to make sure the lens is uh, wide open. On this lens it's 5.6 and I'm just going to get a rough uh, composition. For that I'll need the dark cloth. So I'll disappear under here for a, a minute or so. And I can just get rough uh, focus. I've got the camera higher because I um, I want to see the top of the bellows so that's why the camera's higher. I get my loop and then what I'm going to do with this camera is pull the back slightly back until I get rough focus. And that's popped into focus. Now I'm going to use the loop and focus on the camera itself so I get fine focus. So I've actually focused on this part of the camera here. Uh, this is out of focus and that side is out of focus. And that's because the plane of focus, focus uh, as the camera sees it, is straight. So it's running straight down. This plane of focus is going that way at an angle. So I've got to compensate uh, with that by using the front swing. And I'll probably swing that so it goes swings to the uh, left. Like that. You can see, swing that way. That's just exaggerating it. And I might need a little bit of front standard uh, tilt, tilting upwards. Again, because the camera's pointed downwards, so the foot plane of focus is going like that on this front of this camera and the roll of triax is going straight up. So I'll just have to compensate. There are only fine adjustments, but it does allow you to get these things in focus. The main thing to remember is, is, to, is when you're doing this, it's very difficult unless you've got a, a studio type camera, a technical camera, to get everything in focus. We can only do so much with these cameras. So I find the best thing is to think of what you want in focus and get that in focus and let the rest go out of focus where it has to do because there's no way of getting it all in focus. So again under the dark cloth I'm going to move the front standard until I get these, uh, this side and this side into focus and uh, I'm pulling that uh, roll of Kodak Triax so it comes into the same plane of focus going that way. It's hard, it's hard to explain sometimes, but it's simple when you use them. So I'll go under the dark cloth and, and do these movements. So I'm just applying some swing now. And then I'll focus again. Fine focus. Use a little bit more swing. Fine focus. Touch more, and now I've brought. Keep in mind, this is work, working wide open. I brought that side of the camera and this side into focus. Now I'm just going to check on the roll of uh, triax to see if that's coming to focus We're on the plane of focus that I've set. So all that plane is now in focus. Now I've got a um, slight deviation in focus from top to bottom so I'm going to have to use a, a bit of front uh, tilt and this way I'll be pushing the front standard backwards because the, as I say, the, 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 the plane of focus is running at an angle that way and this, this uh, plane of focus is running straight up and down so I just need to apply a little bit of a backward tilt. Just tilt it and then refocus. So I'm focusing on the top of the camera, tilting so the 
bottom of the camera comes in focus and then do it again probably have to do it three or four times just just to make sure I get it right And that uh, looks to be about right there so the next thing to do is um, stop down the lens at the taking aperture uh, I'll decide that when I stop down the lens uh, to see how much then the depth of field can pull things into focus as I say I want the back to go out of focus so I'm just going to step, stop the lens down to roughly around about f say f16 and just uh, preview what that looks like on the ground glass that looks about right I might just stop it down a little bit further I'll go between f16 and f22 And that looks fine with that so I've got the camera in focus going this way from this side to that side I've got the Kodak Triax in focus and then the rest of it is uh, falling out of focus now that done I'll close the lens and try and not kick the camera so the lens is closed oh one other thing is if we take the uh, dark cloth off just to make sure that when you make some of these movements that uh, it's not cutting off light going to the to the back the best way to do that is to open the lens and then just simply look through it and if you can see all the four corners of the ground glass screen which I can it means there's no there's no cut off so what the lens is seeing is going to go into the film right load some filming I keep it wrapped up in a plastic bag so no dust can get in. Dust is one of our worst enemies. And then uh, I'm going to use Fuji Across. Um, bob that into the back of the camera. I haven't pulled the dark slide out yet. So the camera's all set. I've got the, uh, the lenses shut down. Make sure the lens is shut down. One of the mistakes a lot of people make is they leave that lens uh, so the shutter's open, uh, pull the uh, put the film in the back, pull the dark slide out, and obviously with it open, uh, you're exposing the film. So always work methodically. Make sure that that's shut down before you do pull any dark slides out. Um, the next thing is to uh, attach the uh, cable release. And then I'm going to show you the lighting setup. Right, this is the lighting setup. I've got an LED light um, that's covered in uh, kitchen rolls, like tissue stuff, just to diffuse the light. And I'm bouncing that light off the wall onto the subject rather than straight at the subject, because that would give a light that's too uh, contrasty. Now, this might look a bit, as we call in Yorkshire, Heath Robinson. Uh, I need to reflect some light uh, into the side of the camera here and I'm going to use this and it's one of these, it's a cheap light I've got them from eBay they work on batteries but they last a long time and I've got different levels and I'm just uh, bouncing that light into that shadow area so we'll turn the lights off and see what uh, the actual subjects looking like uh, with this lighting so if you just give me a second. So that's the lighting uh, setup and how it's roughly given me an idea 
I mean, the film's going to capture it uh, differently to what I see here, but it's giving me a good idea. So we can see we're getting fall off uh, to the background. So the front's going to be bright and it goes uh, to the background. It's going to get darker. So the next uh, part is to take some uh, light readings. I'll, I'm going to spot meter this one and um, uh, just see what the readings are giving me. So I've got my uh, Siconic spot meter and uh, it might be difficult to see this in this light but I'm going to photo uh, sorry I'm going to spot meter off this side and and um, all this uh, this dark side at the front and just see uh, what reading I'm getting because I want to make sure that I'm going to get detail in the shadow areas it's given me two minutes but that's placing it on zone five so I have to uh, underexpose it by two stops and that puts that zone onto zone three and it's telling me 30 seconds at uh, f16 and a half now I'll, I'll spot meter from the front of the camera in the dark area and that's giving me 15 seconds so I reckon the exposure wants to be around about uh, 30 seconds at um, f uh, 16 and a half now the other thing I have to remember now is that I've got uh, bellows extension that's something that it's easy to forget but I have to measure the bellows extension and that's from the nodal point of the lens to the film plane so I'll just measure that now and it's given me 200 millimeter and the way I calculate that is on the the app on the iPhone on the uh, reciprocity timer app uh, I go into the bellows you might not see this but you set the uh, focal length 150 millimeter and then set the bellows extension at uh, 200 millimeter and click apply uh, Fuji across at 30 seconds I'm going to have to expose it for 51 seconds at f uh, 16 and a half right first thing to check before I pull the dark slide out I always double check make sure the lens is closed uh, the aperture is set to f16 and a half and I'll just test the shutter now it's on time that means when I press the shutter or the cable release once the uh, shutter opens press it again at the end of the time and it shuts so that's working correctly so I've got the shutter got the aperture set that's uh, the lens is, the shutter's uh, closed pull the dark slide out and I'll set the time on the reciprocity timer app it's got its own timer uh, let's have a look yeah I don't know if you can see that it's uh, telling me 51 seconds that's with the bellows extension and then just press it and start the time so the time's running down now I'll just fast forward I don't want to keep you waiting just looking at the side of the camera right that's the end of the time shut, shut the shutter the exposure's been taken put the dark, dark slide back in black facing out and that's it so I'm going to turn the lights back on this is not a long video it's just uh, one to show you how um, how you can actually uh, set up a still life with uh, very uh, minimal uh, amounts of equipment you don't need any fancy lights uh, for, for this type of work I just got the biggest expense was the LED light which cost me about £50 these these cost me about £1.50 a very handy little light to have uh, the background the uh, cloth is from an older roller roller blind a blackout blind 
so you can see I've not spent a lot of money just to get, get this set up I've not a, a massive amount of room in the in my little uh, studio here but I've enough to do uh, small still lives and uh, if we just look at the camera the movements that I set on the camera uh, was uh, rear tilt and front swing I didn't put any movements on the back uh, that that won't give me any uh, effect for the uh, plane of focus so I'll get this uh, uh, sheet of film developed now and hopefully after I've done all this video it turned out a bit what you'll see right get the film developed and I'll show you the finished product this is the high resolution scan from the Epson uh, V8 uh, 50 flatbed scanner and I just thought I'd show you the conversion process I use a plugin called Color Perfect it does a lot better job than Photoshop converting a negative uh, to a positive you find it once you've installed it under the filter tab in Photoshop open it up and then I don't use these presets I set it to a fresh start so no adjustments have been made the first thing that I check is the highlights and the shadows the highlights are there on the right and the shadows are on the left so I grab the slider and then pull down to bring the highlights down to naught. When I've done this it will produce a rather flat looking scan but that's what I'm after. Uh, it makes it easier to edit uh, using the uh, contrast grading. And then the next adjustment is in the BP tail box. Just click in that box and then watch the numbers on the shadows. Bring those down to the come to naught and then press OK and we'll see the conversion from a negative to a positive and that's the conversion as I say it's a little flat it needs uh, editing um, I'll use my contrast grading met method but let's have a little look uh, focused on the uh, the front of the camera the first part where I focused was on the shutter dial and then if we pull it down We've got all this in focus. We've got this side on the rail in focus. All the way to the bottom, just slightly going out there. And Kodak, that's uh, it's in and out of focus, um, but uh, that's acceptable. And let's look at the uh, the depth of field. The depth of field is just lovely just as I wanted it, just the front of the camera uh, to be in focus and the tri-x and then the bellows going to the back of the camera is going out of focus and you can see that little uh, light that I used on the left hand side has reflected light back into the bellows and it's uh, revealed all the shadow detail there and, and on the base of the camera so all in all that's uh, what I'd call a, a good uh, scan so I'm going to edit the picture now using contrast grading and I'll show you that when it's finished and uh, I'll also show you it in a what I call a fox frame. Right, these are the two prints that I'm putting on eBay for auction. Uh, they're printed on one of my favourite uh, papers, which is Epson uh, Cold Press Bright. It's a nice thick uh, paper with a lovely delicate texture. Uh, both uh, images uh, measure uh, 12 by 9 inches and I've printed them with a, a delicate warm tone that I think adds to the period of these cameras. They've both come signed and they've got the actual model name 
and when they were manufactured already typed on the image. Um, I was going to sell these uh, as separate prints as a package on eBay but I've decided that I'm going to leave them on one sheet of paper just in case you just want those two vintage cameras in one frame. If you want them as a, a separate uh, pictures all you've got to do is cut them down the middle and uh, you've got your two separate prints and you can uh, frame them separately. So as I say if you want to help support the channel please go to the link in the description and uh, put a bid in. All the funds that I get from uh, print sales etc goes back into me buying uh, film and chemicals and just helps me to uh, keep uh, doing this uh, content that I do and all, all other future content that I've got ideas of doing. So if you like this video please give me a like, um, better still subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions please leave them uh, below and I'll get back to you and once again uh, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.